Yeah, Malik, uh, could you just give us sort of a rundown on what went into your, your decision, you know, when you actually decided who you talked to and so forth? Um, yeah, uh, I actually decided probably last, maybe a week or two ago, you know, um, mm -hmm. kind of just went into the decision, just talking with, you know, my uh, OAU coach, you know, my mom, my brothers, you know, just a lot of people about the decision that I should make. And, you know, what ultimately came into it was uh, just feeling not ready. You know, when I came into this, my goal was to make it to the next level and, you know, not just make it to the next level, but stick at the next level and be able to stay there and give myself a long run in the game, you know, just not feeling prepared yet. I just... I just felt like it was best for me to come back, you know, give it another year. I was blessed with the opportunity too. So um just trying to take advantage of that. Hey Malik, you had kind of a, a tweet out there saying you didn't want you let your, your teammates down, didn't want to leave it like that. Can you explain more, elaborate on that and why you felt like you did let your team down when you know you couldn't control a foot injury? Um you know, I think it's just the competitive nature. Um, I just feel like going all the way back to the summer, I just feel like uh, to an extent I didn't handle myself how I should have been from the jump, you know, just kind of taking advantage of everything that was going on. Just I think I could have been a little bit more locked in on the goal at hand. But like you said, you can't control the injury. So, I mean, that part of it was – just God, you know, just that's that's that part of the game that nobody knows the answer to. But uh, as far as letting my team down, I just feel like um, being the captain and the leader for years now just really needed to be out there with them, you know. Um, I, they needed the size, but just really wanted to be out there with them. I just feel like I let them down, you know, just not being able to compete with them and battle with them daily, getting better in those practices. Jody and then Matt. Hey Malik, how 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 is the injury right now? How would you? What are you going through right now as far as like rehab? Will you have to have any other surgery? And then, in and after that, like how different will this off season be? Trying to make sure that it's healthy and a hundred percent for next year. Um, you know my foot the the foot that I had surgery on that put me out for the most of the majority of the season back in November, that's doing good. Um, the Duke game, you know, I came down on somebody's foot and it was sore for maybe like three or four days, maybe a week, you know, it was sore, but that's been feeling good. But um, my ankle, uh, you know, I just had, I just had a surgery done on that. It wasn't too severe of a surgery, but um, on my left ankle, I had to get just a scope done. Um, just go in there and get some shaving done. Uh, so I'm actually in the boot now and in a little like splint type thing. So um, as far as that goes, it's a six week process to get back. So I'm not looking at being worried about next year at all. And I'll actually be good for the summer. But um, right now I'm just working on recovering that ankle while at the same time strengthening that bone in the other foot. Hey, Malik, uh, Matt McGavick with Sports Illustrated. Uh, how difficult was this de uh, decision to come back to Louisville? Was it something that you kind of deliberated back and forth with, or was it something that you kind of came to pretty easily? Um, it was back and forth, for sure. It was back and forth. It was a tough decision to make. Um, when it ultimately came down to making the decision, it was easy. It was an easy pick. But, you know, um, just being around college basketball for so long, uh, coming in, the five-star recruit that I was, you know, with the mindset that I had after the talks that me and Patino had, just wanted to come in, get right to work, and, you know, get out of here, go to that next level. You know, when you go from coming into college, wanting to be a future one and done, to turn it into a fifth-year senior, you know, uh, that's not difficult for – I mean, that's not easy for anyone to – cope with you know so I think it was just about exploring my options that's all that it really was um I don't think I never really wanted to leave I just wanted to really explore my options and 
just try to see what would be best for me over the next year for the long run. So that's what made me come out with staying at Louisville. Mike Lyman, Russ. Hey Malik, Michael McCammon, Cardinal Authority. How much did that small window where you were, where you were able to get on the floor, impact your decision? You know, help you get a, I guess, an understanding of how how well your foot was going to recover. And then a second question: um, How much are you talking to Carlique about his decision? Um, could you ask me that first one again? Sure. Um, you know, that small window that you had uh, where you were able to get on the floor. How much did that, you know, I guess, give you a sense of how well you recovered from your foot and possibly play into your decision? Um, I think it, I think it helped a lot. You know, uh, the biggest thing about getting back out there on the floor was throughout the whole um, process. I told myself I would be get all the way back to 110 percent before I went back out there, which I ended up, you know, it was really my right foot was at 100 percent. But, you know, still dealing with things that was bothering me in my left ankle which I didn't know were so severe to the point of surgery at that point. But, um, you know, it was just about getting back out there and competing with the guys, trying to make a run for that tournament bid. So um, there's no regrets there or anything like that. And as far as it affected my decision, it just it just gave me the uh, – gave me that sense that I needed another year, you know, just um, I didn't have that full feel for the game. It had been a while since I actually played almost a year. So I just didn't have that full feel for the game. And um, that's just not how I want to leave my college experience, you know, going down for the second half at Duke. I just feel like I need there's a better story to to my college basketball than that. So just wanted to finish that out the right way. And, you know, I'm on my roommate every day. Uh, I love to have Carly stand with me for another year. Um, but, you know, he has to do what's best for him. Um, if that's going and testing the waters and leaving this year, then, you know, I'm always, I'll am always i always have his back and that'll always be my boy. But I love to have him back. The talent that he is, I think that we can really make some noise next year. Russ. Can't hear you, Russ. Let's get back to you, Shannon. Hey, Malik, can you clarify? Did you hurt your your left ankle in the Duke game, or was that a separate injury altogether? Um, you know, I think it goes back to Florida State in 2020. Um, when I rolled my ankle, landing on Dwayne's foot. I think that it's really just been building up over time. And um, I did come down on it funny in the Duke game, so it was hurting, and it probably looked like that. But, you know, that was something that built up over time that was kind of bothering me all the way throughout the process. Ken Taylor? So, Malik, when, when you got hurt in, in the Duke game, it, it looked like, I mean, you stayed in for, I think, it went down to the other end of the court and then came back. You kind of knew as you walked right off the court. At that point, are you are you knowing that you've injured your right foot more? Or are you, what exactly is going through your mind at that point as you just go right onto the bench? Um, yeah, at that point, it was my right foot. You know, uh, it was a very sharp pain that I was feeling. And I wasn't sure. I didn't. I never thought that it was like super hurt again. But uh you know, I just felt it again, and um, the doctor told me if I felt anything like that to, you know, shut it down. And, you know, at the point, I'm like, uh, I want to try it one more time, you know, go back out there, you know, try it again. But, you know, having an amazing trainer that we have, for Hina, you know, he kind of just told me shut it down, you know, got ice on it right away. And I think that kind of healed it back up. I think um, going back out there would have been a really bad idea, even though in the moment I was feeling like I wanted to. But, um I never really thought that it was really hurt anymore. I just thought that I had kind of what I did, but just bruised it again. All right, back to Russ. Yeah, Malik, you mentioned that you didn't think you were ready yet. What you, what advice did you get on uh, what you need to work on, and uh, what do you think what do you think you need to work on that you weren't ready? Um. I think I just need to work on working, you know, um, getting getting in the lab more and perfecting my craft in all areas. Um, 
becoming an overall better a better player, a better leader. Um, as far as the feedback that I got, you know, it wasn't as much as my game, but more so just what would be best for me for the long run, you know, trying to get where I want to be. And um, the game part just has to be me. I want to work on my entire game, shot, ball handling, just every single area I want to get better and be a much better leader consistently. I, I don't I don't remember if you said – did you talk to – I'm sure you did talk to Coach Matt and get his input. Yeah, um, you know, Mac is a Mac is a great coach. Just he doesn't he doesn't want to have that influence. Like he wants to give there, he wants to be there and you know, give you his opinion on things, but you know, he doesn't want to make that call for you. He wants you to make that decision so that you know it's you and it's not pressure at any extent, you know. Jody and then Matt. Malik, how much, uh, obviously, disappointment for you the way the whole season went? Um, the, the last week, though, and watching the guys and not being able to be out there, and then you guys watching the selection show and not being selected, how much did that drive you to want to come back, and how much will it drive everyone else in the offseason? Um, you know, I think that that kind of pushed me over the top to making that decision to come back uh I played in one tournament game, four years, you know. Um, it just doesn't sit right. Uh, you know, the tournament is the reason that you come to school, a school like Louisville. So it was just that feeling of letting them down, you know. It, I can only imagine how it feels for a first-year guy, you know, just like me, um, to basically make the NIT. So, you know, just wanting to be, be better for them and be there for them next year so that – I can make sure that it doesn't happen again is all that I'm worried about, really. Matt? Hey, Malik, Matt again. During all these discussions with the doctors uh, during your surgeries and whatnot, have they told you if you're a risk a risk for re-injury to your feet, or is it just pure happenstance that your injuries keep happening to your feet? Um. You know, the the first surgery that I had before my junior year back in 2019, that one has a high reoccurrence rate, um, you know, so and that's what did end up happening again. But um, they say that after you get that second surgery, they go in and they do a little more as far as like a bone graft and a little bit bigger of a um, screw. They say that it holds up a, a lot better that second time. And usually you don't have to get that injury that um, that surgery, that procedure a third time. So um, that's pretty good as far as that goes. Um, and then my ankle, you know, that was just something that I never really got taken care of. Um, not because didn't want to or like anything like that. Just we kind of didn't really know the severity of it. We had got an x-ray, but it didn't show that. And um, once we got the scan is when we seen that, uh, that I needed, that I had the ankle spur. So I believe that I'll be good um, from here on out. You know, it's just about freak accidents happening. You know, I landed on somebody's foot one time, rolled my ankle, and then I just landed on somebody's foot in the game. You know, that was my first time, first two times that ever happened. So it's just freak things like that that uh, I just got to try to be cautious of. But he doesn't say that he think I'll be injury prone to hurting my feet. Ken Spencer and then Gary Graves. Uh, Blink, I've got two kind of on a similar path. You know, the injuries are, are, as you said, freak accidents. Do you feel like you need to be able to prove to people out there that you can go a full season, you know, injury free? And is that maybe some of the some of the motivation for, for coming back? And and do you also feel like you've just been hit by some of the worst luck? Um I wouldn't call it luck because I've been blessed, you know. I've been playing the game of basketball since 2010, really at a high rate. So, you know, um, I've been blessed. Uh, this was a – I mean, last year, my junior year, was the first year that I had actually had to sit down away from basketball, you know. Um, but I think that uh, – um, could you ask me that exact question again? 
Well, the, there was the there was the bad luck thing, uh, but then also, do you feel like you need to be able to like prove to folks at the next level that hey, I can make it a full season without being hurt? Yeah, no doubt, no doubt, because you know, um, longevity is part of the game, and you know, nobody wants somebody who's are they going to be able to play tonight or not? So, you know, I think getting back to myself in that aspect is is very important for for my play at the next level. Hey, Malik, you were talking earlier about, like, making noise and everything with, with, with Carleek. Uh, what about this roster? Um, do you like about it? I mean, and how were you really blending in, bef- you know, when you came back and, and before the injury? Where did you feel like you were fitting in and could help? Um, I, I felt like I fit right in because, you know, I feel like the guys, the guys respect me and, uh, they're, they're with me 100% and they understand what I'm going through. So I feel like they always have my back through all of that. And, you know, just getting right with Carleek is just, I feel like, um, I feel like we have a good chemistry, even though we never really play together. I feel like me and, him, me and him have a connection that could really be well on the court. And, you know, just as a team in general, I like, I like the guys that we have because thing that it's always been at Louisville, it's always been together. Um, even before we started staying together, tough together, unbreakable, I feel like it was a together group. And, you know, that's big for basketball because you can't go to war with somebody every single night if you can't have a regular conversation with him and ask him about his family and things like that. So, you know, the connection is the biggest thing for me. And just the pieces that we got um, is good. You know, that that Super 6 class jumping up into their junior year now. Um, it's time to take a big leap for all of them, you know? And um, I think that they need to they need to play a big part in the leadership that we get because, you know, that class above them, they didn't have any commits. So, you know, it's we won't have a legit senior this year. So, you know, um, those guys stepping up as juniors and taking that leadership role and the sophomores – taking that next leadership role, well, the now freshman, that'll be sophomores, taking that leadership role. And everybody being a, we got to be a player-led team, you know. It got to be us. It can't be the coaches always correcting us. We got to be able to get it started. Go to Tom Lane and then Jeff Greer. I'm going to kind of, uh, I guess, two questions. One, were you surprised to hear that a couple of the assistant coaches were not going to be uh, renewed, uh, and, and what was the general reaction to that? And two, you had talked about coming in with the mindset of being a one-and-done guy, and you're a five-star guy, and you weren't going to be here very long. How difficult has it been? You, you've obviously had things out of your control with the injuries, but how difficult has it been uh, over the years to to kind of change that mindset and realize that that this is uh, the place for you right now? Um, you know, the coaches. Uh, it did come as a shock. Um, I miss those guys. I feel like they were really good coaches. Um, I don't think anything like upstairs was wrong with it. You just, you know, I think it comes to a point where you got to try something new. And um, sometimes that's just how it is. I think that's the that's the sad part of it, you know, built the connection with those guys over the years. But uh, I think it's just on to the next step. I think that I think we all knew that the staff wouldn't stay together. People want to go new places and people have to try new things. So, you know, that's just part of it. But uh, those guys will be missed. You know, I think they're great coaches. uh, And I think that's just that. We just got to get that new piece brought in. But, um, you know, coming in one and done, uh, I think it's an expectation for every athlete, you know, as far as when you come to this high of a level, you just feel like you're that guy, you know. But um, the transition has been, it's been bittersweet because you don't realize how much you grow in your college days. From my freshman year to now, um, I say I'm a completely different guy. You know, just that growth that I made and um, people don't know how much different it is coming from high school to college basketball and how difficult it is to succeed at that next level. You know, to make that jump from high school to college and then one year go to the NBA, 
you know, it's more difficult than people give credit for it. But um, just the growth that I've made in these years is it's just amazing to see. And, you know, I've built family forever here in Louisville. So the connections and everything, it's just, it's great. It's great. Last two from Jeff and then Eric. Yeah, Malik, I, I'm curious, when, when you came back, Jalen Withers was able to play the four and you guys had great success, especially against Notre Dame uh, when you were on the floor together. How do you think you guys play when you're on the floor together? And what do you think your return does for him to allow him to, to maybe play the four a little bit more? Um, you know, me and Jalen have been connected since he got here. Uh, that's a little bro. You know, um, he's just he, he comes to me for things. And, you know, I'm always there to give him advice to, on whatever he needs to know. And um, he's a great he's a great kid and he's a he's a great player. Um, he kind of got put in a bad spot this year just because is how talented he is and how athletic he is. Um, we needed him to step up and take that five man role. And, you know, I think he did a really good job for it to be his first college his first college year, you know, he's a freshman as far as basketball goes. So, you know, for him to be able to step up and play the five and stick with it daily, you know, that's difficult. Uh, I'm a player who feel like who feel like I should play the four and like be on the wing and things like that. So, you know, for somebody like him who's really talented at what he does in those other areas, it's hard for him to switch that role for the team. But, you know, that just – gives a testament to his character and how he stuck with it and he didn't complain about it. But, you know, me and him, me and him being able to play together, I think it gives the team a new dynamic because it gives him a chance to actually crash the glass and not have to worry about boxing out that big old five as much and just things like that. And I think that our chemistry will be great because the connection we have off the court. So I'm really excited to play with you. Last one from Eric. Malik, um, Tom had asked you about the assistants. I just wondered, I mean, you've been a coach on the floor uh, for a lot of your career. How much more valuable to some of that turnover? How much more valuable do you think that could make you and some of your leadership and knowledge of what coach wants to do, contributions like that? Um, I think it, it makes it very valuable because, uh, you know, we got we still got Coach uh, Mack and Coach McGee's, but, you know, those other two – it's, it's like a kind of an open void, like they'll understand the system and the scheme. But after me being around three years, I feel like I can even help those guys to an extent, you know, who, who Max chooses to bring in, you know, like helping those guys out with things that I see and things that I already know. You know, I just feel like I can be that that coach's player. Malik, thanks for taking the time with us today. Thanks to everybody for joining us. Uh, reminder that we've got a women's basketball news conference coming up at 1 p.m. Thank you again. Appreciate it.